Hello everyone, it's Pixilon8. Today I'm going to show you how you can use 3D modeling and printing to customize your entire space. Here, my large IKEA gaming desk isn't tall enough to accommodate to the drawer unit named Alex. I temporarily solved the problem with wooden shims. And yeah, that's not really pretty. But guess what? I'm going to show you step by step how I created a nice custom 3D printed version. A simple, stylish and tailored made solution. Stay tuned until the end of the video to see the result. The first step, of course, after identifying the problem, is to take measurements. All the measurements. That's right. A proper 3D object requires precise measurements. There's no room for trial and error here because prototyping takes time and money. We are smart folks here. And we know that accurate measuring is a crucial step. Height, width, depth, thickness, Everything needs to be noted down to have the clearest possible project on paper. To make our lives easier, a super technique my father taught me is to trace the shape of the desk leg using a piece of paper and a pencil. It's quite simple. Leave the desk to slide a piece of paper underneath, then trace around it with the pencil. Be patient, I will show you on the computer how we can use this to assist us in our modeling. Next, I can scan the paper and it's crucial to have a clean, high quality image. I use Photoshop to ensure my image is perfectly straight. We don't need a large image, only the shape matters. So I crop the photo to the right size. And now let's get started. I will use my favorite modeling software to create my object. Of course, I already have an idea of the design and the measurements will be essential in my work. First, I create a plan onto which I will place my cropped photo. It will be my reference. This part is pretty simple. I need to create a texture and add the photo. And I also have to make sure that the image is not deformed and at the right size. Okay, now I'm good. The last thing is to get my measurements on the side. Everything is set up properly, it's time to work. However, please be careful during your modeling not to confuse the diameter of a circle with its radius. It can always cause problems depending on whether your software asks for information about diameter or radius of a circle. In this section, I am starting my modelization with simple splines. It will help me to stay on track with the proper measurements thanks to its finesse. If you have any questions on the modeling, feel free to ask them in the comment section and also give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. If it goes up to 50 likes, I will share the files for free. With those files, no headache, you will jump directly to 3D printing. Ok, some explanations are in order here. I'm modeling the leg of the furniture. But what we want is to create a leg that will slide on like a sock. Therefore, our object must be larger than the blue object representing the desk leg in the real world. Also, it's important to note that 3D printers tend to slightly inflate compared to the perfect computer dimension. So we need to take this fact into account. You should always consider a small margin of error during printing. The whole project is to raise the desk up. So, of course, the most important thing is to build the wedge. Our 3D object will smartly hide the wedge by having place on the inside. To be honest, the hardest part of this project was to have a clear plan and design sense to good measurements. I know, I know, I'm repeating myself, but the difference between the 3D art that I do on this channel and this new concept of video is that this object will have to support a real desk in the real world. So it needs to be sturdy and reliable. And there you have it, it's almost done. All that's left is to smooth out our object to have something a bit nicer. No need to add extravagant details or ornaments, I wanted something simple, smooth, and that would go well with the IKEA style. Now it's time for my favorite part, witnessing the magic of 3D printing thanks to time lasses. After this, we try out your piece before printing the other three, just in case. You never know, even if the measurements were done perfectly, there might still be a surprise, so printing only one allows us to save filaments in case of error. Fortunately, it's an A plus on the first try. Perfect. Now, all that's left is sanding and painting the less black. But before, I couldn't resist putting another time lapse. And here we go. I've prepared some water to drink because I will need to sand for at least 2 hours to make the four legs smooth. Be warned, it will create a lot of dust, 
so don't forget to wear a mask over your nose. Make sure to send in all the angles, even on the inside. It can help if there are some printing errors preventing a smooth fit. Unfortunately, the condition for filming the painting weren't ideal. So I don't have images to show you, but in the end, it's pretty simple. I used a black primer and applied several thin coats until it was completely opaque. I am pretty satisfied with the final result. Now we can move on to the fun part, switching those horrible wooden shims with our 3D printed legs. And there you have it, it's finished. As you can see, the furniture is now below the desk and we even have some extra space. I don't really know why IKEA did not thought about it, it's just a question of a couple of centimeters. Thanks to the extra space, you can also slide the furniture in order to clean behind. That wraps up the project guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, give it a thumbs up to support the channel. This is Pixion8 and I see you soon for more adventures. Stay creative and keep reading modeling!